You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I mean, funny like a clown. I'm Peter Bink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that doesn't spend time in this family can never be a real man. Damn! Hot. Kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Frame by Frame. And this is part 2 of our Alien franchise retrospective review. And in this episode, we're going to continue to talk about Alien Resurrection, the uh, um, Alien vs. Predator movies, and Prometheus. Oh, but we'll be tagging on the end a little bit about Alien Isolation, that amazing new game that looks so much like the original Alien, it uh, sends shivers down your spine. Anyway. Let's carry on with the review. But obviously, Ripley doesn't die. She comes back. No, she dies. I know she dies, but she comes back. Alien Resurrection. Alien Resurrection, which came out in 1997. These were very, very hard to come by. So was our cargo. Whatever you got going on here ain't exactly approved by Congress. It's a military operation. Really? Who are you? Ripley Ellen, Lieutenant First Class, number 36706. Ellen Ripley died 200 years ago. You're a thing, a construct. They grew you in a lab. What the hell is going on here? He is breeding an alien species. I wish you could understand what we're trying to do here. Now they brought it out of you. Not all the way out. You want to tell us what this is? It's a queen. She'll breed. You'll die. Ellen Ripley died trying to wipe the species out. I'm not anxious to see her taking up her old hobby. things before. Yeah. What did you do? I died. We're moving. That's a standard emergency procedure. Any serious problem in the ship autopilots back to home base. What's home base? Earth. I thought you were dead. Yeah, I get that a lot. As Stephen said, the two words, Alien Resurrection, just then, he actually wiped his eyes as if he was crying. Alien Resurrection. I'm going to read a quote that comes directly from Joss Whedon, who, um, wrote, did he write the original script or just a version of the script? He wrote, I, I think he either came in on a rewrite or the original, so, yeah. Right, okay. Doesn't matter, though. This is what Joss Whedon said. It wasn't a question of doing everything differently, although they changed the ending. It was mostly a matter of doing everything wrong. They said the lines, mostly, but they said them all wrong. And they cast it wrong, and they designed it wrong, and they scored it wrong. They did everything wrong that they could possibly do. There's actually a fascinating lesson in filmmaking, because everything that they did reflects back to the script or looks like something from the script, and people assume that. If I hated it, then they'd just change the script. But it wasn't so much that they'd change the script, it's just that they executed in such a ghastly fashion as to render it almost unwatchable. I, I, I went to see this in the cinema. It was the first Alien film I went to see in the cinema. I don't know what I was hoping for. I don't know what I was looking for when I went to go and see it. I actually had no expectations. You don't even see an Alien film. That's, you, that's what you want. You want yeah. an Alien film. But I came out and I didn't see an Alien film. No. 
I saw another another director having a go at something that that looked like it could have been. So it it's the vagueness of it all. Well, well, I think first of all, it was the wrong director. Jean Pierre Junet, um, director of Amelie, and um, the City of Lost Children. The City of Lost Children. Which is visually, inc- that the City of Lost Children visually is a is a beautiful film. To be fair, Jean Pierre Junet is a vision, another visionist director. Yeah. He's an extremely good fantasy director in a way. He 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 creates he creates um, uh, new twists on reality. That are almost coming from a very colourful um, oil painting. He mm. is very, very good at detail. Yeah, and and he does bring that skill into uh, Alien Resurrection. I mean, if you take take all the actors away f- for a second, if you will, um, and take all the aliens out of the film, the visuals of the the, the, the sets themselves are quite spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The. Um, the the ideas of of where it all belongs is 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 quite clever it's all very grandiose it's all very uh clinical i'd have to say it's not it's dirty it's not gritty it's very yeah, clinical that's definitely the the, the the departure is it's not that gritty dirty feel anymore no i mean the characters are the characters that that are put into this film and and I think that Joss Whedon is very right there the casting is is it's Jean, it's not it, it's it's casting for a Jean-Pierre Jeunet film Jean-Pierre Jeunet's act, um, ca- characters are always larger than life mm. they're always yeah. caricatures they're almost cartoon like in their um in their mannerisms and over exaggerations they are not based in a sense of reality or any sense of reality that the alien films are actually based upon yeah i mean if but if you look at alien resurrection if you mix mix all the uh, the characters up from different films you have um brad dorf in that film yeah have him talking to Hicks and aliens. Have those two characters pulled out of each film and have them having a conversation with each other about the aliens. Doesn't work. No. You can't. You can't pull these characters. These characters don't belong in the same universe. They don't belong. Ron Perlman. Just, yeah, Ron yeah. Perlman. I love Ron Perlman, but he's yeah. great. But he's there for the paycheck. He and is. He's made films with Jean Pierre Jeunet before, and that's fine. The guy in the wheelchair. Um, he also has made films with Jean Pierre Jeunet. Yeah, he they acted, were both in City of Lost Children. Weren't they, they both were, and he kind of acted as his translator because Jean Pierre Jeunet does not speak that much. He, at this time, again, doesn't speak a lot of English. Mm. So what uh, what are Twentieth Century Fox doing? What have what is behind their thought process in and in, in actually getting that director into Mate Ray Resurrection? Are they are they beyond I, caring now? Or is it? I, <sighs> I don't know. Is it just he was the cheapest they could find? I don't know. I don't think he's cheap. I don't. I, I don't think he was. He won't be as expensive as a big Hollywood director. Was it? Don't be able to afford Cameron to do this film. I guess not. Yeah, I guess he's probably a little bit. And the international money was probably helpful because the whole crew were French as well. Yeah. Um, Sigourney Weaver. She said yes. She the did. Someone. <laughs> It was the money, wasn't it? It must have been the money. Because she... Even doing Aliens and Alien 3, it, she had to get... She wasn't... She didn't really want to do She had to be convinced to do those films. Oh, it was all about money. Yeah. It was all about the money. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. she she'd gone down to saying that she didn't make that much out of Alien and Aliens. That most of it went on, like... They said 70% of the money she made went in, in like, on taxes and things like that. But on Alien Three, she, taxis, what, taxis, taxi films. yeah, taxis, because um, <laughs> obviously it was being filmed in a different country, but she wanted to live at home, so she had to pay taxis there and back. <laughs> so it drifted into the millions. <laughs> you know. Yeah, she made Alien Three, but it's not as if she was she not getting the the roles that she wanted from any of her movies. Is that why she came to Alien Resurrection? Was it it? She, yeah, well, she hadn't really had any kind of renaissance at that part at that point. I guess she wasn't. She wasn't making that many films then, was she? Well, an early draft of the script, Ripley wasn't even in it. It was Newt. There was going to be a clone version of Newt. Oh, hang on. I haven't heard this. Yeah? Did you... I, that's what I oh. found, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But 
what well, that was never mentioned in the resurrection documentary that came with the definitive edition of the DVD. <laughs> it's wrong. They should have mentioned <laughs> it. Why didn't right. they mention it? Well, it's just you know I've been going around the the internet. I know it's not exactly. S- the internet, well, yeah, but the internet is full of, of, of possibilities. And yeah, that's, but well, that's, that's one of the things I read. Whether it's true or not, I'm interested in that. Yeah. Because that would have been, I mean, they wouldn't have gotten Carrie Hen to, to come. That would have been interesting. It would have, but then, then again, I just think about the what are the reasons behind this? Why did they need to resurrect Sigourney Weaver? I mean, surely if these aliens existed and it's, the, what, it's about 300 years into the future... Yeah. Would they not have the ability to just go to the planet and find these aliens again? Why? Why did they go to the trouble of of uh, like the only way we can actually have um, the alien DNA is to resurrect this one person who was who had an alien inside of her? Or was there some studio executive who just had the sick? thought of I want to see Sigourney Weaver have sex with an alien as anyone that was uh, now they alleged that that was actually Sigourney Weaver's um, and I, I uh, that her was her idea, idea. but what? The, well I, I think that she didn't really care I mean uh, she knew that her character had died so whatever character that came back as the new Ripley was a clone she could do whatever she wanted with her and I, I really think that it was a joke that was in passing and then they just wrote it in and she just went with it right I don't think I mean was she serious enough to say well I'm I'm not going to do it unless I'm having sex with that alien <laughs> uh, yeah and also I want to play a bit of basketball yeah I mean that yeah. was, there, there was no need for that no they, they, they didn't need to make her a super I mean they're making her a superhuman kind of just put it into that whole well they, they can't hurt her again yeah so yeah exactly so you're not really invested in her as a character anymore who were we invested in I mean who were we I mean, was Winona Ryder no she was an android she was so who were we rooting for here as far as I'm concerned Ripley clone I'm was... trying to think who I'm rooting for I you still, like, carry on thinking um, shall we play some uh, I'll tell you what we'll play some supermarket music in place of while you're thinking <laughs> No, 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 there's actually music playing right now, you don't need to hum it. Oh, okay. I'll insert supermarket That was pretty good. music. Okay. Uh, Muzak. Okay. Oh, let's have a look at the melons. Oh, the melons are looking ripe. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you thought of who you're invested in yet? Alien Resurrection? I've decided I'm not invested in anybody in Alien Resurrection. Okay. Took all that time to figure that out. Shall we move on? Yeah. Is there any more to say about that film? Apart from it's obvious we don't like it. The music? Joss Whedon didn't like the music either, right? No. I don't remember anything about the music. Uh, I like the theme. The one theme that came out of it, the opening theme. But that's it. Was, it was very alien esque. Um, very, I say alien esque. It was very um, Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah. What do you think of the um, the the alien baby? Oh, I, I was kind of hoping we weren't going to talk about we have this. To talk about that. Lots of um, allegedly, lots of women were complaining because when it was getting sucked out the the window or the airlock or whatever. Yeah. It was crying like a baby would cry. And they, that upset somebody, people. Yeah. Somebody said it was like. It was screaming mummy. Uh, one, one person that I knew said when he went to the cinema that he, that, and I, and I I think this is this is true. Alien Resurrection was rushed before it actually f- was finished. Right. And that they made decisions in the theatrical cut that were incomplete and not not right. So whether whether when when he went to the cinema they actually had the, um, a, a screening. Where the creature screamed, "Mummy!" It wasn't mummy. It was money. Money. Ah, oh, yes. 
You nailed it, man. That's yeah. clever stuff. Money! <laughs> um, yeah, exa- money. exactly. Um, 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 apparently, the, okay. um, the creature had both, um, in the design of it, had both male and female genitalia. How did we see... Did we not see this? No, um, apparently it was... Um, it it uh, brushed it out. What did it... This, ever... It looks like that. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to fr- yeah, throw that to... onto the onto the website. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's basically waddling around with its junk. Are those genitals there? <laughs> I'm guessing so. Those two white blobs. So they, you say it's they a dangerous have... place to put your testicles, isn't it? Yeah, it's not really a good spot. But so what we're saying is, is that it's actually walking around with its big front vagina and a penis. Yeah. Belly vagina. I mean, that's what I when I was a, when I was like five years old, I thought that's where vaginas were. Maybe this looks like a this looks like a drawing from a five year old who doesn't quite understand what genitalia is yeah. and where it goes. He looks happy with himself though. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, I'm just reading here. Natu- uh, the studio asked for it to be removed, and so the naughty bits were digitally digitally scrubbed down. Yeah, isn't that a phrase you hear often? Well, to be honest and fair, the studio were probably um, looking at that. Why didn't they just go as far as just to scrub out the whole? creature itself because I think it was a ridiculous thing it to was. have yeah um, the problem with this whole film and I think the rushing of the gestation period I loved Alien because it had a nice uh, slow um, you know when Cain gets the alien down in, in his throat it gestates it starts to grow it grows fast enough for it to for him to be out cold for a long time and then he's having dinner and it chest burst that comes yeah. out and then it it does miraculously grow quite qu- quickly. Yeah, but it like sheds its skin. It sheds uh, it. That's yeah, great. It, it grows yeah. fast enough, and and then all of a sudden it's a big beast. Um, so the growth spurt of this of this alien is quite phenomenal already. But then once we've gotten to Alien Resurrection, it it doesn't. It, it just seems to just pop out. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. it is, mommy. And and I, I don't understand what the hell they were trying to. Why they needed to have. Um, I mean, to be honest, Sigourney Weaver and I mean Ripley clone is the worst, worst. Um, not even an anti-hero. Not even no. a. I mean, there, there's no heroic quality in that woman in that character at all. It was a big mistake. It was from one. I mean, there's nothing. She does nothing in that film but cause problems. Just because she's horny, she ends up, uh, you know, I'm going to go have sex with an alien. I'm going to make it this much more worse for everybody. Yeah. And it, it just, like, there's no re- there's no reason for her. There's nothing good that could ever come out of Alien Resurrection. It's just a nasty, nasty film that a lot of good actors were involved in, that a, a very good director was involved in. It should never have been. And it makes me angry. I think and, we'll leave that on. We can leave that there now. Ah, <sighs> this relaxes me. I feel calm. I'm in a good place. I kind of need to pee now. What are we going to talk about now? What's next? Oh. Evolution-wise, what's next? I suppose we'd have to talk about 2012 Prometheus. I'm glad you didn't want to talk about... Oh, you can shut up now. I'm just going to have to turn it off. Okay. Are you sure, Prometheus? We're, we're going to skip AVP? Seven days ago, one of my satellites over Antarctica discovered a pyramid. Where exactly on the ice is this? It's not on the ice. It's 2,000 feet under it. Let's make history. Oh, my God. Whoever built this pyramid believed in ritual sacrifice. Did you hear that? Did you say this room was called? Sacrificial chamber. This door is all here. This whole thing was a trap. 
They're not hunting us. We're in the middle of a war. They're using us as bait. You ugly son of a... Yeah. Okay, Prometheus. <laughs> go on. You know, go on. AVP. Alien versus Predator. And Re Alien versus Predator. Predator? Predator. Requiem. Go on. Tell me about them. <laughs> the shit stay <laughs> on the underpants of Alien. Okay, let's have um, Sonic the Hedgehog music in the background. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Alien versus Predator. People wanted to play the game and they thought, oh wow, this is great, let's play this game, I can be a predator or I can be an alien. The studio thought, okay, it's working, it's working, this is a good test, we can see if, if they want a movie from this. Money. money! Money! The money, okay, yeah, they love this game, they're playing it, they're really, really loving it, they, they, uh, I tell you what, they're screaming for, for a film, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, who do, we, who do we have to pay off to get the Predator? Us! Who do we have to pay off to get the alien? Us! It's all coming from us, it's all our stuff, it's all our stuff, let's do it. Okay, um, who's directing? I don't care! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, is Lance Henriksen available? Always! Always available! Lance Henriksen comes with the... He's actually frozen in in store within <laughs> 20th Century Fox should they ever need him. <laughs> Um, so okay, so let's let's get that funny guy from Train Spotting. He's great, Scottish, great. Let's do it. Um, who who else? Um, I don't know. Let's. I don't know who the rest of these. People I can't remember are. any of the characters or anything. There's just him from Train Spotting, who I think is is um, gloriously cast. And yeah, I don't really care about anybody else. I don't see any. I don't see. The, yeah, okay, so let's have uh, predators, let's have aliens, let's let's create a mythos. Let's let's use the Egyptian mythology and create this whole idea that... Yeah, uh, yeah remember the pyramids. I do remember the pyramids being... Underground there. pyramids, of course, because that's where they're built. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the predators want it to be a big secret, so let's, let's just put it on Earth. <laughs> in Alien, though, there was um, supposed to be pyramids in it. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, they go into a pyramid, apparently. I've read that somewhere today. But uh, they cut it out. They never use it. Uh, maybe so it is in the mythology. I think it's probably because of the, liber uh, the Liberati. <laughs> liberati. The, the Illuminati. The, the Illuminati. The seeing guy. Yeah, that must be. It's probably because of the Illuminati uh, connection. Probably not a good idea. Okay, so yeah, where am I? Um, oh yes, they um, they have the uh, interesting. They do have very good. Um, uh, Image design, the design specs for this, for the actual film, the idea of, of having the, uh, the the chamber where the hosts are put onto onto the beds mm. in a very similar fashion to the um, to to the Prometheus um, yeah and chamber. Uh, it has a very um, advertisement like aesthetic to it. Yeah, it, it looks bright and yes, yeah. And you know what I mean? Bright. Well, you, yeah. I just said yes, and I'm thinking, well, hang on a second. Well, no, I don't know. Uh, colourful, right. I think, is the word about it. Is it colourful? I think so. I thought it was just muted grey tones and... I'm coloured by one. Uh, uh, have you got the right film? Probably <laughs> not. I might be thinking of Requiem. Are... Is Requiem more colourful? What? Rec okay, we'll get to Requiem when we get to Requiem. Mr. Okay, don't right. jump the gun. All right, my friend. Okay, but I'm nearly finished. I'm pretty much done. Oh, right, um, okay. Yeah, nice design. Um, interesting. Uh, they, they, they work the mechanics of getting all the, uh, of, of the hosts... Um, getting them all impregnated and then having the aliens released and then the predators are supposed to hunt down the aliens because that's what they do, it's fun. Yeah, it's But smart. none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. No, they're terrible. Terrible film. It's a terrible... It's worth noting though, I think it's in Predator 2 when he goes on the... Um, when Danny Glover, I forget his character's name, so... Yes! Oh, he, he... You see an alien school, don't you, in his collection, yeah. in, the, in the yeah. Predator's collection. So there, just... there is a... It's there. It's there, it's, it's... which... And, you know, I don't mind them playing with the idea of aliens and predators, but it doesn't. It has absolutely nothing to do with alien. With, no. um, but, and 
as far as I'm concerned, the Predator films are on their own. They're great. I, I enjoyed both Predator One and Predator Two. I do. People have talked down about the second one, but I, I really loved the second it. one. Yeah. Second one was actually better than the first, as far as I'm concerned. And really? I really wow. enjoyed Danny Glover Predator Two. I think I haven't seen. Let's it watch in a Predator long time. Predator Two, and we can talk about that next time. Yeah, let's do that. So yeah. that's yeah. So, but at least we won't have to talk about AVP. We can just talk about those two nice, nicely neat movies. Yeah. And then just yeah. But a- AVP Two Requiem. Are you ready? Go. What came out? I don't know. Hold on. The town was completely overrun. Fuck you. <laughs> cat, the cat has. The cat's just like, please, not Requiem. Anything okay, but Requiem. anything but Requiem. Well, okay. At the end of uh, Alien vs. Predator, this is the exciting part. A predator gives uh, uh, has a chest burster come out of yes. his chest and then it's called a predator alien <laughs> that is or an uh, alien uh, predator alien predator 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 alien they, they, they i think they called it a predator alien in um in requiem that's what they, they they went as far as to think that that deep into what they were going to call it really? um so what happens is is that this uh, predator alien causes havoc in the in the ship and it crash lands on you named it planet earth Oh. Circa the 20th century. We always get in the way, don't we? Was it the, uh, well, I'd say the 21st century, but uh, I, I couldn't tell it was so dark. Now, you, you thought that it was colourful. You might have been. This, this might have been the colourful one. No, no, no. Alien Resurrection was the colourful one. I might, yeah. Maybe or, I'm just mixing bad which, films together. No, Dark, Dark, Dark Star was the colourful one. <laughs> okay. Right at the beginning. No, right at the beginning. No, that was uh, that was the psychedelic era that you missed. I think that was when that was the opium talking. Um, but Alien vs Predator Two is such a waste of time. Um, uh, yeah, such a waste of of everything. They have a scene where. They rip off Alien Three poster with the alien going up right next to um, yeah. one of the characters. Uh, there's a whole scene of that, um, but they don't put any thought behind it. They just say, "Wasn't it cool when Sigourney Weaver was in that poster and the alien went straight to the side of the head and and hissed and ah and yeah." yeah. The, the, but the reason why it did that was because uh, the Ripley was carrying it. Yeah, maybe. she had one. So that wouldn't happen ever. The alien wouldn't just suddenly take a moment and go, Oh, do you know what? That's It's a female. Mm, I'm going to sniff it and snarl. You know, it, it, oh, it's doing it for no reason whatsoever. It's doing it because it's been done before. Um, characters in Alien Red, uh, in vs. Predator Record. Have you actually seen this movie? I have seen it, yeah, but I just can't remember anything about it. Exactly. Well, I think <laughs> people die and um, then... then... There's, there's the pretty teenagers in it. There's teenagers in it, for, yeah, because it's that, that's that's what we'll do. We'll have um, characters that are having they're having problems, of course, in their lives, and uh, they all decide to just run around at night, um, coping with their lives and running into aliens and predators and dying um, one by one in in swimming pools and uh, things like that. I think there was a swimming pool. Did they make? They must have made money. They made films. money, I think. I think they made. I don't know the money. Yeah. Who would have gone watching it? Um, fans of Alien vs Predator, the game. Is that it? And people who saw the first film and really, really, really wanted to know what. I don't. I don't know why. Why Alien vs Predator was. Uh, I don't think they're making any more though. No, and they, that's that's a good thing. They made Predators, plural. But then um, that I don't know if that's worth watching. I think maybe we ought to watch that. As I've well. seen that. Um, you have seen. I that. have seen Predators. Yeah. Oh, and is that on Earth? No, um, the abducts, like talented. You got like murderers and thieves and people like that. They abduct them from Earth and put oh. them on a planet that can. That, it's like a jungle planet, really. Yeah. So it's I know the Predators hunt them. Okay. It's yeah. kind of like the first film, really. It's it's enjoyable. It's okay. It's not. Yeah. So it's not totally awful. We can look at that as well next time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, AVP to Requiem, it's just a big, dark, pointless, badly acted, badly performed, badly directed. Um, I've had enough. Okay, so you say you've had enough. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So as everyone wants to know, the space jockey, 
in Alien. Yes. Where does he come from? We need someone to make a film about that. Now, I, funnily enough, I, I, as a kid, I mean, I, I've always been wanting to write my own uh, Alien version of that story about the, the, the where that Alien jacket came from. Mm. And I actually drew my own characters based on our faces, and I actually had them looking like elephants. Right. I didn't think of the... Uh, the jockey being a, cost, a, a suit, right? And that they being something. I actually thought that's what they looked like, and they were bigger, that larger than life aliens. Um, and I had a, a a thing where I don't know. I was just trying to really, really think about what that would be. Yeah. But I didn't really go very far. Right. So I failed. I guess somebody out there must be able to do it. Well. <clears throat> Did you get the film you wanted with Prometheus? I was wrong. It was so wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm letting go of the film that I wanted with Prometheus. Okay. I left that behind in the cinema when I went to go and see it. Um, I wanted to actually know... Okay, basically, in a nutshell, I wanted to know what where the space jockey came from. I wanted to know where it was going to pick up these aliens. And, yeah. and I, I kind of guessed that it would be picking up various different other species. Mm. Kind of like uh, the Flight of the Navigator. Yeah. You know, where you've kind of got a, a farm of different species. And I was kind of thinking that maybe one of them would have been human. And that in kind of like, like predators, that they would have been taken from Earth. And maybe that was the, that was going to be the only way that you could actually have humans... Uh, involved in the story because you'd have to have humans involved in a story if you're going to do a story about the space jockey even though technically they weren't discovered until Dallas yeah, yeah. and until the Nostromo came upon it so I don't I could never understand how Prometheus as it was could have actually happened before Alien right okay because I think I think the film starts remarkably well I loved the, the visuals at the very beginning, you know, the waterfall. And yeah. That was in Iceland, that was. Really? Yeah, it exists in Iceland, that whole location. Wow. Uh, it wasn't CGI. You know, was, the, the person wasn't CGI either. That's an actual person. They found him also in Iceland. Did they? Yeah, he was just roaming around the hills, couldn't speak a word of, word of English. So, beautiful visuals to begin with. Beautiful visuals to begin with. And <laughs> um, it did have a lot of promise, right? Yeah, I think it did. I was very excited to watch the film, but it just... just cliche characters. Um... Ragtag. It was ragtag characters. Yeah. You know when they set everybody up on the chairs to sit in front of the presentation that was about to be delivered? All I can think of was aliens. Yeah. Uh, and grunts. Mm. And they nailed every single stereotype again. Yeah. But what bugs me... There's a few things that bug me about Prometheus and they still bug me even though I've watched it probably I've, I've watched it about five times because I am desperately trying to find something and I'm, I'm, I am changing my opinion as I'm watching it there are things that I'm holding on to there's films things that I'm letting go of but the fact that she says it herself uh, Charlize Theron's character um, see I don't even I don't even care about names no they're just actors playing characters it was a trillion dollar mission Okay. Well, Cat's not happy about that. It was a trillion dollar mission. And are you saying that by 2089, the best people that they can get are 
Um, yeah, the fools that are in that film. The fools that are uh, and the unprofessional, the lack of the lack of, uh, and, and I'm going to go straight to him. The meteorologist. Yeah. Who are? Uh, is he? Is he a meteorologist? Geologist? Well, he claims to love rocks. Yeah, but so he has no interest in rocks and alien planets. He he goes. He lands there with everybody else. He sees a planet. I mean, if if I was brand new to on this mission, going to a planet that I've never been to, and I am in this field, I would be giggling with excitement. I'd be yeah. like. <gasps> I can't wait. He, he he didn't even have equipment with him or anything that resembled. Oh, I want to collect rock samples. I'm gonna I'm gonna write a I'm gonna write a book about this. This is gonna be amazing. Well, you know, he just complains. He's terrified of everything. I'm just here for the money. I don't care. Why would they hire him if he is only in it for the money? And what is he there to do other than? I mean, the, I, I would. How did that interview come across? <laughs> When they said, okay, we need you. Said, well, I don't care what you want me to do. I just like rocks. I'm just in it for the money. Perfect. Perfect. I don't get why... It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to have... They don't need that character. They only have that character because they need to have these colourful personality characters coming through. And they're just reaching back to old the previous films to kind of... Okay, oh, we need to have... Is is there a butch girl in this? No, there's no butch girl. Yeah, we need a butch girl. There's there's no, well, okay, let's put Charlize Theron in there as our sex kitten, uh, lack in personality. Why why is she in there again? No reason. Okay, there's no reason for her to be there. There's no reason for the geologist to be there, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no reason for um, her boyfriend in it. Her Does he need to? He doesn't need to be there either. No, because no, it's it, these characters are put in there just so later on in the film something can happen to them. And Wayland, there's no need for oh, Wayland, Wayland to, be need to be there. No, they don't need. I mean, um, Wayland wouldn't go. He wouldn't. He, risk, wouldn't, he wouldn't risk himself. He, if the reason for this is he's, to, ob, he's obsessed with with being all immortal. I know. Yeah, but if you're immortal, <laughs> don't put yourself in danger. If you want to be immortal, send someone else out there to get it and bring it back to, to, to you. To at least, I mean, they don't know it's dangerous at this stage, and they get David to just talk talk to him at the end, and he's like, "Oh, fuck you, <laughs> rip your head off," and <laughs> that's it. There's, I mean, uh, they don't even. I mean, if it was that important, then they would have actually just tranquilized him on the spot, mm. put him in in a, in a in a chamber, and just did whatever they needed to do. They wouldn't just stand there in front of him with every with with all their balls dangling from their from their I, bodies, ready I, to be ripped out. I'm not ready to leave the geologist alone yet. Why? What you else know what? You, you know do? what I'm going to talk about, right? He's terrified. Of I like everything. Rocks. He, he 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 moans. He's scared of everything. But that scene when that snake-like creature comes out of the water, him and his buddy, him and his friend, they look. He's he's playing with it. He's like it's like oh, a look child. At you. You're so beautiful. Look at it. If I saw, if I'm on an alien planet and something yeah. that looks like a snake comes out of some water. I'd be going in the opposite direction, yeah, my friend. Yeah, especially when I've been complaining and moaning about the fact that they shouldn't be there. Yeah. Uh, in the first place. It's, it makes no sense. You know what that scene reminds me of? That <laughs> seems right out of Jurassic Park. It is. When the guy goes up to the dinosaur, who he thinks is a beautiful, pretty dinosaur, that all of a sudden turns into this venomous... venom. If that guy had actually seen Jurassic Park, then he probably would have thought, hang on, I've seen this. This happened before. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. But... Why did they need to do that? It was a throwaway idea. It obviously wasn't in the same script that the the, the lines were that I don't want to be here. Uh, I'm scared. I'm terrified. I don't like dead bodies. I don't like aliens. I'm interested in rocks. I'm interested in... in oh, I think he was a biologist, wasn't he? Is that what it was? A biologist? I think he was a biologist because they put those two together all the time and I think that, you know... But the only reason for that bit is so the snake thing they can cut it and it bleeds acid. All right, so that's they where. Could, but they could have done the, that. They could have done that without going. Hello, pretty thing. Hello, come here. They could have been scared and terrified and still have the same scene. That would have been fine. This thing yes. comes out. They start running away, and then that's after them. That actually would have been good. That would have been scary. Yeah. And then this horrible snake-like creature manages to get them. There's this gory death scene. Yeah. That. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, what's wrong with that? But I, I, but no, they they had to 
build their characters to be these obnoxious or just pointless characters that were going to be killed off anyway. And they had the token Scots, Scottish person in there as well. They did. Um, they didn't have any French or Italian or anybody who was... Uh, they, they're either American or they're Scottish because I think that probably they liked that character in AVP. So they thought, let's have another Scottish uh, person who... Or Swedish. There's a Swedish person in there. Is no, she meant to be Swedish in the film? She's actually English. She's supposed Pure, to be English. She's supposed, well, she's not supposed to be Ripley's grandmother or any relation to Ripley, but she does look like Ripley. Um, she, she does. I don't think uh, Ridley Scott makes any apologies for picking her because she has the Ripley appeal. Um, but yeah, she's a Swedish actress. She was in the uh, the Swedish the Swedish versions of the um, of yeah, girl with uh, dragon tattoo, and the and tattoos. Yeah. yeah, and she's uh, really good in them. And yeah, They're really good films. And and at, at the beginning of those movies, she didn't speak a word of English. That is amazing. So I like to I'd like to think that for for her money as an actress she does a great job considering her background, considering where she's from. If she was a native English actress, I probably would have been a little bit disappointed she was coming across a little bit EastEnders mm -hmm. in some of that in some of those moments. Um but because of her origin and her her ability to to be that so so convincingly coming from a Swedish background, she is She's going to go far. She's good. Yeah. She can ho she can hold on to the Prometheus stories and do well. But she I want to see significant growth by the time um, Prometheus 2 comes along. But I'm, I'm still not done with Prometheus 1 yet. Medical. 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 <laughs> I need to get this thing out of me. Yeah. I need to get this thing out of me. It's funny because when the, um, they mention it, that machine... At the beginning. Yeah. Oh, what, are wow. gonna, what are we going to use this You've for? You've got one of these things. That, what is it? What, it mends it just it mends you, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Why? Why do we need this exactly? She you goes. Just think, oh. Not, but what are they looking for? The origin of the humanity. Origin of humanity. Because that's obviously what the beginning is, isn't it? It's, Saying they're the architects. That's what they're called. So we have we the have come engineers. from them. Or the engineers, not architects. Yeah, the engineers. The architect was in the Matrix, and he was crap. Engineers. That's it. That's what they're called. So, the, and so the, the the idea, obviously, they've created us, and now they've created something else to kill us. Yes. Why? I think they were just traders of arms of of, of biological weapons. You that's think? all they. I think that's all they were, and that's all. That's that's what I wanted them to be. Right. That the space jockey was simply transporting all these things. Um, maybe to sell to the predators. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Scratch that. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> but no, they they were just transporting, uh, like flight and the navigator. They just go from planet planet to planet, picking up all these biological um, species, and then they sell them on, or what well, they do, whatever they need to. But well, they do don't know because they created us. They made us. But then why, why do they need to have all these different biological entities? And goop and gloop and things. Why? What? What? What's their plan? What's their goal? To go to a, to go to Earth and repopulate Earth? I th that seems to be what it was. They, they created us, and then they created this. To, they're going to destroy then us. They're going to destroy. Is that just the like? That's what they say. That's not what the aliens are, are saying at all. But when um, we, what's the the robot called in it? David. David. When they, <laughs> yeah, when David's looking, he's in that sort yeah. of control room. He finds out where they're heading, doesn't he? And yes. it comes up, and it's uh, and he assumes what they're doing. Everything is assumed in this movie. Nothing. Nothing is actually as uh, it, it's only speculation that they're going to go and destroy Earth. And and she goes all nuts at, uh, at the engineer, saying, "Why are you trying to kill us all?" And the engineer is probably just going, "I've just woke up, mate. I just woke up. I've got a job to do. Um, oh God, there's like it's like an infestation of these weird things here. I'm just going to get rid of them. I'm going to Earth because Earth girls are easy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I'm going to Earth. Maybe it's just a holiday destination. Maybe he's just going to." Maybe he's just passing through. Maybe it's just a, a a spot on his map where he's just going to see where he needs to go next. They're only assuming that yeah. they're going there to destroy. Um, so yeah, I think it's just full of assumptions on on all the characters' parts. There's, um, but again, it's its own film. It's not meant to be Alien. Yeah, I think Ridley's gone to say that the in Prometheus Two, there's there'll be no xenomorphs in it. 
he, he's not doing what George Lucas is doing in trying to please everybody. He's just trying to please his, you know, he's got his own ideas and... That's just what's strange, because he, he's proven a fantastic director and writer. Yes, and, you know, visual artist. Yeah, well, how did he do that, Prometheus? He's an intelligent I guy. Know. It's I don't, The well, ideas don't make sense. Characters are just badly drawn. But and... why couldn't he have done this sooner? Why Why did he have to wait until the whole franchise was completely ruined? I say ruined. It was Every, every single film is his own film. Mm. No, nothing follows on from the other, as far as I'm concerned. They're all just stories yeah. about that have aliens in them. And maybe sometimes Ripley depending on where you look at it. Yeah. Um, but why didn't he just do this as soon as Alien was... I mean, sequels just weren't the thing, though, back in 1979. Well, something I want you to talk about before we finish this yeah. is the film that should have been made. Alien Isolation? Yes. I'm Samuels. I work for the company. It's about your mother. Alien Isolation has just come out as a game, and uh, the guys who are making this, uh, who have made this game, uh, they should be the filmmakers. They should be filmmakers because they, um, they, they've gone back to the original film. They've basically done. This is what I want really to do. Forget that all the other films exist. Forget that there's anything else out there, and just look at Alien as the blueprint. Um, they have brought to the forefront the character of Amanda Ripley who is um, Ripley's daughter yeah. who we know nothing about so this story that they've created could be very very plausible that she's actually out there looking for her mother the um, visual style of this of this game is purely alien yeah. everything in there right to the CCTV camera so the, the, sorry the, the screen shots have all been done in the traditional way using VHS, Betamax, all of the original... Uh, as, as if the game was actually visualised in 1979 and then just kind of put on as a digital... Uh, yeah. yeah. So they didn't actually just digitise anything. Everything is kind of a, a, a real raw sense of, of, of how the original film looked. And... The film is that the game is is basically the, similar to Alien, where she's on this station that is obviously got a xenomorph on board, and she's just trying to find out the truth about the Nostromo, where it is, and and why why wasn't that ever ever thought about back in the day? Why why did they need to take it, the Alien franchise on such a stupid crazy ride? I mean. They they just left I mean, everything was set up. I mean, in Aliens they really set up Amanda Ripley. Hmm. They didn't do that in Alien. It was Aliens that did that. So they could have easily have just slipped right into that storyline from that. Alien Three wouldn't have existed. I mean, David Fincher would have been really good at doing an Alien. He would have made a great isolation film, setting it right back in the days. This game, I'm guessing, is going to be huge. It's going to be very popular. It is, but it also has the problem that a lot of gamers are complaining because it there's nothing to do other than just opening doors. Uh, it's it's a simulation as far as I'm concerned. It's right. not an action game. They're not running around shooting each other all the time. And there are little puzzles. Uh, the guys from Red Letter Media actually did review it and they said that they spent about, uh, they spent about three hours just trying to figure out how to open doors. But that's because the game is based in the reality that it is supposed to be, mm. and they're committing to it. They're not. They're not just going to say, "Okay, well now we need to kind of have a we need to have a peek." So let's have an action sequence. Yeah. They're they're oh sorry, they're they're sticking to what they believe it should look like, and that is Alien the <laughs> film. Hats off to them. So if this film, if this game, sorry, becomes popular, do you think there's a chance that some big fat Hollywood exec will turn it into a film? 
they did it with Alien vs Predator yeah. they haven't done it with The Last of Us which I'm surprised at because The Last of Us is probably the one of the most impressive games that I have seen they haven't done it with Grand Theft Auto to be fair these all these games are huge games mm. but they're not making those into films yet so, yet yeah, give give or take I mean the, the, the thing they is did Need a, for Speed didn't they Need for Speed was that a game I think it was oh Turbo, Turbo yeah something to do with yeah Tokyo Drift and all that kind yeah. of rubbish but uh, um, but yeah Alien Isolation is is one of those things when I when I looked at it and I thought why isn't this uh, the canon thread of Alien why did all this other stuff happen why did Resurrection even happen how did 20th Century Fox let all of this go so far so badly and we well yeah. We because don't have the answers. Even Ridley Scott has made Prometheus set in the year 2089 before Alien. It's set before the, the, the events in Alien. Why does it look so much more futuristic? Well, the, they'll argue that point saying that the Nostromo was just a mining ship, wasn't it? Yes. That's the, that's how they'll, oh, that's how they'll they get will. away with that. And these guys are obviously rich and super... Yeah, yeah. Trillion, trillion, this is a trillion dollars that was kind of like, a, you know, that was just grunt money. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, okay, I can... I, I can that's I can the way they'd argue okay. it, because then you could say, well, Aliens... Yeah. ...is um, still... It doesn't look as great as... Prometheus that's corporate does. though that's corporate. that's corporate they're all smoking in that movie as well yeah, it's there's ways around it there's nobody's around smoking it. In, in Prometheus I've noticed that, there, that there's nobody kind of just really chunking on a cigar the uh, clean cut all American image yeah but it's it, it's it just doesn't feel like it is in the alien world Prometheus kind of jumps out as just being too too futuristic for me yeah which you know that's that's kind of what I'm, I'm I don't know how they're going to call it Prometheus 2. Yeah, because the ship blew up. The ship... The, the, I'm guessing that they're using the name Prometheus as a, as a form of symbolism, but why would they name the ship Prometheus? I wish that uh, that, that the Scottish woman had... Uh, it was actually her ship, and she called it the Rabsy Nesbitt. Because <laughs> that would have been an awful title for this film. The Rhapsody Nesbitt. <laughs> Rhapsody Nesbitt. Oh, um, oh, God. But, yeah, Prometheus, we don't know where it's going to go, um, but obviously she's on a mission to find all the other engineers and destroy them all so that they don't go to Earth. Is it to destroy them or is it to just find out where... She, oh, she wants to understand them yeah. first. But which, you know, she, she's just going to stand there in front of them all and start having a, Why? Why? <laughs> what have you done to me? In English. In English, and they'll all understand. But she's got David to translate still. David's As, still yes, there. Yes, David's still there. Yeah, he's head. But it uh, makes me wonder: uh, can they survive with just uh, can the French, can the story actually survive with just two characters, or are they going to ha- end up on another Prometheus ship, Prometheus Two, with a load more grunts? Are they going to do the same thing again? I t- who knows? Well, we will find out. When's it coming? Twenty seventeen? Is it due out? Uh, well, the, they finished the motorway works around the corner in 2017, and I think this, the next one comes out in 2016. Right, So okay. we'll still be stuck in heavy traffic until we find the answer. Well, let's hope Ridley can um, sort, his, sort himself out and yeah. make a decent film. I'm going to have a two-year-old by the time this movie's done. You are. <laughs> but the motorway still won't be fixed. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. I mean, I, I can't believe how long we've actually... We've got a lot. We've had to put a lot of films into into that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, are you happy with the franchise, or is it just? Are we just going to let it be, and let everything just, just? It's steadily got worse, hasn't it, since seventy eight? Yeah. You know the Alien films. By no fault of the directors, I don't think. But I, to my, like Alien is the pinnacle it's the best one in my to me that is 20th century Fox's I lot, biggest achievement yeah I know a lot of people prefer Aliens but I prefer th- that style of film yeah. I prefer that style of film to an action film anyway I prefer to have it creep up on me and, yeah, and for, for me absolutely. to be sucked in rather than just just kind of being at arm's length the whole time as Aliens does keep you yeah. at arm's length Alien vs. President they're just cashing films just for money there's no cash. artistic money, 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 integrity money. in there it's just it's awful but I think 20th Century Fox have a lot to answer for what could have been 
a really good series if they had mm. actually knuckled down, got gotten the Prometheus stories done earlier, gotten the alien isolation guy to go back in time and and pitch the idea of Amanda Ripley. That would have been that would have been a really nice way of doing it. Yeah. But I don't think any any franchise is safe. Unfortunately, not. I can't think of a single franchise, and, and probably by the next one, I'm going to try and think of a perfect franchise. <sighs> okay, I think we should leave it there. That's it. Okay, well, thank you for staying with us this long. It'll um, be edited down. I'll, I'll, I'll cut all the um, purring <laughs> that Andy does. <laughs> and I still haven't watched Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. thus concluding the superhero conundrum episode part two yeah you will you will it's 24th i think the 24th of november is out on blu-ray you're watching it my friend okay well because it's fantastic we'll see right so we're gonna end this podcast and thank you very much for listening um keep tuning in because we're gonna keep on doing this yes whether you like it or not <laughs> All right, thanks, bye. Signing off, bye bye. Benson, Arizona, you warm wind through your hair. My body flies the galaxy, my heart loves to be there. Benson, Arizona, the same stars in the sky. But they seem so much kinder when we watch them, you and I. Now, Bomb, consider this next question very carefully. Liquid storage bags! You will never get caught short again thanks to... Liquid storage bags! Here you get eight, that's right, eight bags in which you can store your very own liquid items. Bags are sold separately, liquid not included. The attractive cardboard box is easy to open. With each wonderfully transparent, durable, and easily accessible. Ready, ready to, to go. go! That's right, when you've got to go, liquid storage bags are there for you. Liquid storage bags? That's right! Liquid, Liquid storage, storage bags. bags! They're sleek, sturdy, and stylish. And what's more, you can write all the information you need right there on the bag! Where the space is provided. Warning, do not write on liquid storage bags. Liquid storage bags cannot be found in any store, by phone, or online. So you know that liquid storage bags are the product for you. And only you! What's it called? Liquid storage bags! Ah, uh, yeah. yeah! Liquid storage bags!